All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So today I have the honor of bringing on, yes, another new guest co-host. Somebody I met thanks to, shout out to Dr. Anthony Chaffee. Was it Chaffee? So Chaffee. She's going to have to clarify that for me because she knows him pretty well. They've had a few talks on his podcast and uh, the the power of this conversation today, it might polarize some people depending on my listeners. I don't know how many of my listeners live the lifestyle I do, but I'm a pretty solid, heavy duty, 90 to 95% carnivore. That could be the theme of today. Uh, but the, the the young lady coming on today, her, her branding I love is beyond the scale, true healing. And yeah, we might talk a little bit about meat or a lot about meat. We might talk a little bit about how plants might not be a best decision for your microbiology, your biome and beyond. Uh, she, she has a little bit of knowledge from the vegan world and now the carnivore world. So I'm going to use her slang online because we didn't even clarify that. But her Instagram is at lolly underscore Carney. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right because she's airing from Europe. So Lolly, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Scott, on. I'm so happy. And excuse my English and my mistakes. Oh, you're fine. I, I love it when I get to bring on somebody from a different time zone, a different country. That's the power of podcasting or YouTube channels and, and just being able to align a schedule. Because <laughs> I'm not sure. Am I talking into yesterday or tomorrow for you? I don't even know. Today it is right here. It's 12 o'clock noon on a Monday. So on the East for me, Coast. It's Monday, USA. but 6 p.m. Okay, there we go. All right, so I, it is into the future later today. So, so by the way, is it is it pronounced lolly? Because I'm just an American, a USA guy. Is it lolly? Is it lowly? Is there a, is there okay. a slang there? Okay, uh, to be perfectly uh, uh, royal. I wasn't sure if you want to use your real name or not. So, <laughs> my name is Claire, and yeah. lolly is my dog name. Ah, and that's right. I started using lolly when I started my carnival journey because I was not sure about where it will be bringing me and yeah. so i wanted to stay anonymous but then i created the youtube channel and everyone and everything and now everyone is knowing me like claire because yeah. actually while claire. you're saying that i'm going to screen share so yes obviously there's the instagram lolly underscore carney i already got over 2600 followers already and then yes the youtube is at beyond the scale th t is in tom h is in harry Thirty-five thousand subscribers young lady uh uh it's impressive you clearly yeah, found, I'm doing great. You, you found a subject that people uh, want to follow and learn more about. So, yeah, I think so. And I think uh, one of the main advantage of my channel is that uh, there is no BS. I say everything that is true and sometimes true. The truth is not really beautiful. But anyway, when when it is about saying the truth, I prefer to say the truth. It's funny you just said that uh, the truth isn't always beautiful because a an hour ago I was on a, a a video conference call with my client and some of the uh, the businesses she works with. And we were trying to carry a, not a complaint, but a, a message across to that company and onto the other company saying, listen, guys, if you don't tell the truth from the beginning, because uh, she she has a, she's a sales representation firm, so factories will hire her and her team, and I do consulting for her company, and then they sell the products for the company. They don't hire their own salespeople, but we're like, hey, if you know if things are taking longer to manufacture, could you please tell us how long it is? And they're not. So then we so all of a sudden something that might have taken four weeks could take six weeks. So the whole point here is like we're put, trying to put out a fire that doesn't even need to be lit up and ignited because we said, guys, if you just say from the beginning, like all of a sudden things are going to take a little bit longer, labor shortages, supply chain, whatever, you're an engineer, you get it. And it's like, then just say that. So then they can pass that education on to the end users, the customers expecting the products, et cetera, et cetera. And they're like, well, we're, we're not lying about anything. We're like, well, you kind of are because you're not telling us until all of a sudden, oh, sorry, guys, that order was supposed to take four weeks. Now it's going to be taken six to eight. Now the sales teams have to go back to the customers and they have to, you know, hopefully not upset them and put these fires out. We're like, just be proactive from the beginning. But people don't, they feel like they, people can't handle that or all of a sudden it's a problem or, and it's interesting because we can tie this directly into this health mission of you because, you know, again, you are a former vegan. Am I wrong about that? 
I was vegan like yeah. from 2012 up to 2017. Yes. Yeah. So five years of your life. And yeah. that's what's powerful about today because I've never had a former vegan now carnivore on my show. I said that, uh, which, oh, hint, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'll be airing soon in her world on her YouTube channel because she and I got to rock the mics last week. Uh, and then I loved it so much. I was like, I got to get you on the show. So the fun there, back to my, my point here, is that not everybody can handle truthful messaging what are you what are your thoughts on that the handling of truthful messaging uh, you know uh you have to find what is true and what is not true uh, out in internet you can find all the information you want and you you can listen to what you want to hear if you want to hear that veganism is perfect, you will hear that veganism is perfect. If you want to hear that carnivore is perfect, you will hear this. So you have to find your truth and uh, you don't want to be uh, confused by some something that is looking too, too beautiful to be true. And I think that, you know, a lot of people are selling you tons of diet, like do this and in 30 days you will reverse insulin resistance, do this and you will be perfectly healthy after 30 days. You will look like a model and you will have a six pack and you will be everything. Everyone is trying to sell you this. Uh, I'm not selling anything. I don't say that health uh, is a quick, easy fix and health takes time. And be careful about who you are listening to. Mm. It's true. We have, we do have a choice in what we open our ears to, our eyes to, what we allow into our bodies physically, emotionally, psychologically. Um, uh, when, when I went back to school as an adult student years ago, I, I was uh, I was originally supposed to be an engineer, then got sucked into the corporate world, then went the, the sales and marketing route, realized I'm very good at that. And, you know, embrace something you're very good at. But then I ended up studying psychology. I almost went the PhD route, really ended up falling in love with it. I was acing all the courses. So it was great for my GPA educationally. <laughs> but the point here is that I love the mindset work in there and understanding more about uh, the influences that can affect us. Because especially depending on the age we're talking about, many of us are more susceptible and maybe more accepting of content depending on where it's coming from. And I, again, I, I, I've said this in the past in the show, I have nothing against people trying to live a vegan lifestyle, a vegetarian lifestyle, a pescatarian lifestyle. Uh, the point of this episode is not about go carnivore, even though it is pretty awesome. Uh, but it's, it's, it's individuals like yourself that can help shed some light on Possibly you allowed those influencing factors to come into your life. You wanted a healthier way of life. So you went down that route uh, and maybe it did work in the beginning. And then obviously eventually something changed. That's what I want to learn about today with you and our audience. But it's like you were just trying to live a healthier life is what I'm guessing. Because that's what most people are trying to do. I tell people all the time, whether it's veganism, vegetarianism, pescatarianism, you know, carnivore, if here in the USA, for example, if you were living off of a manufactured garbage, fast food, seed oils, and all this stuff, any of those choices over the next 30 to 60 days, you're, you will feel better. Because no matter what area we brought up just now, you're removing the bad stuff. And you're finally giving yourself at least a month or two of something cleaner and healthier. That doesn't mean it's meant to go for the long haul, a.k.a your lifestyle, which is a long-term commitment. So where do you want to go with that, Claire? <laughs> yeah, no, but you're totally right. When I when I started switching to veganism, I didn't want to become a vegan. At the beginning, I've done it for my son because I was breastfeeding him and mm. he was having health issues uh, because he was allergic to dairy and the dairy protein were going into my breast milk. And so the doctor asked me to stop uh, just the dairy on my own for him not to get any dairy and to get better. So it was the starting point. So I just eliminate dairy from my diet. And then I I was uh, looking for more people having the same issues. And I start finding people saying, yeah, dairy, dairies are like evil and you should avoid it. But it's not the only bad stuff. It is in your diet. Everything from animal is really bad. And because um, I was 
at the same time suffering from an eating disorder. Uh, it, yeah, I, I was just, my brain was not properly nourished already. I, I was not eating enough fat to nourish my brain. Mm -hmm. And looking at these disinformation, they really uh, easy convinced me that veganism was the right way. And so I switched like a couple of weeks to full veganism and it was just the beginning of the craziness and of course when I switched to this my son was getting better I just removed the dairy that was that were harmful so he started getting better and I was like oh so maybe I'm doing right mm. but then what I didn't realize that without any kind of animal food on my diet I was breastfeeding my son properly he was fully nourished but I was nourishing myself as crazy and I was depleting my body totally and yeah mm. and the more I was depleting my body the less my ability to sink on my own was available and so I was just like yes listening to everyone saying you're doing right and I was totally convinced I was doing the, the right thing yeah and it, yeah so you, you had uh, and I want to skip over that because the one point you did mention was there was a a period of a, a pre-existing eating disorder uh, can I ask which one that one was or was there a cat was there a label for it Oh, no, I was totally, uh, I've been suffering from anorexia nervosa since, since my childhood. Okay. And I had a uh, tons of trauma in my life, which made this even worse. Mm. And then be becoming vegan for me was like so good because, you know, you, you, you're you anorexic and you're vegan. So every, anytime you go out, you have the perfect excuse not to eat what is on the plate and what mm. is on the menu. And so you stick to eat just some leafy greens and no one is questioning. So uh, veganism and anorexia were, were both walking, uh, walking out together for me to die. And wow. they, they, they almost succeed. I, I died for six minutes in 2017. How many minutes? Six. Six. I mean, one's already scary, but six minutes, technically, officially dead? As yeah. in, but not brain dead, I'm guessing, obviously, because they I brought was you not, back. Yeah. Oh, I'm so thankful I was not brain damaged. Yeah. So, which was great, but yeah. And wow. it was because of my general weakness. But, you know, uh, before uh, leading to this point, uh, my body was suffering so much. I lost my hair. I lost my period. I lost my muscles. I was in the wheelchair. And then I got tube fed because uh, I, I didn't have enough energy for anything. So, well, and fast forward that. So, clearly, most of that, those severe moments, the possible end, uh, uh, God forbid, that was due to the buildup from the veganism step, right? Making that leap yeah. into deep diving into the veganism way. Um, it's interesting because I, I reason why I asked about the fire condition anorexia is because there's multiple uh, psychologists and psychiatrists that I've either had on my show or I've uh, met at KetoCon, which is an annual conference for uh, ketogenic lifestyles in Texas. And whether you're talking about carnivore or not, you can talk about keto in a, a vegan vegetarian way. It's a lot more work, but the whole their whole point was healthy fats for the brain tissue, which you already hinted at, right? Like, I think the number is like 80 some percent of our brain tissue is fat tissue. So if we're not consuming healthy fat sources, we're starving our brain. So you move from one condition that's negatively impacting you into possibly a worse one. And that also possibly could have been because your brain was starved as well. And it just got worse. Yeah. My brain was starving. It got worse. I was not able to think on my own. I, I was, uh, yeah, I stopped working because I was not able to do engineering anymore. You know, I, mm. I, I didn't have the ability to, to focus a long time. It was just impossible. And, wow. and yeah, it, it then I, I got totally depressed and anxious. And yeah, this was taking even the biggest part of my day. And I was just starving myself, keeping starving myself, my body, my brain. And yeah, and I was, I, I lost the ability to see that I was doing this. I didn't see how bad I got, you know. I went from being in an engineer on an oil feed platform to being at home in a wheelchair, not being able to move inside my house. And I didn't realize that what was what I was doing was bad. Yeah. I mean, you, you literally had created your own debilitation, the 
So you were not wheelchair bound before. I mean, when you had the anorexia, you were still able to get around, but then taking that leap down the vegan path yeah. got worse. Now, oh, there, yeah. there there could be vegans who listen to this right here and they're going to say, oh, well, that's not going to happen. Everybody, you made some incorrect choices, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but I, I always like the quotes here. There's two things I love. I mean, I'm not going to hit them perfectly, but one is you can't undo millions of years of evolution with a fad diet. And I, I mean, and people refer to veganism as a fad diet, but they refer to keto as that. And they refer to carnivore as that. But again, we're talking about millions of years of evolution of the human species consuming meats and fats. And that's one of the reasons why they tied that back to why we have such a larger brain and better capacities as a modern mankind. Uh, but then another one I liked was, um, oh God, it's not perfect, but they said veganism is a uh an eating disorder but with a, a following and and love and support and fake science or something along those lines and uh, what what are your thoughts on that because i know a lot of people choose veganism for different reasons than what you chose you were doing it just because you want to have a healthy son and you thought that was a, it seems to be working so keep going i know a lot of people choose it also because they they love animals my, my wife is a veterinary doctor we love animals my dog is laying here sleeping right now in my office, in my studio. So um, the, and then other people choose it because they like the community. There's a sense of belonging. There's a, there's, there's a psychological benefit from that, but I'm not a very religious person, but I told people I'm like, well, you could choose an unhealthy lifestyle and consuming, not consuming essential nutrients you need because you need to be a part of a community or you could go to church or go volunteer at a charity uh, or, I mean, there's lots of ways to get around other human beings and have that warm, fuzzy feeling without starving your brain, starving your body and possibly putting yourself in a wheelchair. Uh, what are your thoughts on all that? Um, you know, I love animals. I love them. Uh, I have a dog. She's sleeping with me. She's my best friend. She's like, yeah, I love animals. Uh, and I'm really nice. I will never do some damage. Even eating carnivore, I I try to eat like animals that are really well treated, like grass fed and everything. And this is good. Uh, but when I was totally brainwashed by the veganism, di the vegan diet, uh, and I had to reintroduce the meat because it was just for my for my life, otherwise I was dying. So I had to reintroduce the meat. And after weeks in the hospital without seeing my son, because I was in intensive care and he couldn't come to visit me because he, he was too young. Then he came uh, to visit me and I, I tried to explain to him he was really, really young. He was only five years old. And I say to him, you know, I, I have to eat meat now. It's really difficult for me because the poor animals, you know, but I have to eat the chicken. And he looked at me and say, come on, mommy, I prefer the chicken to be dead than you. Your five-year-old said that? five years old and and it was wow. like wow a bomb and i say okay you're right you need a mom and you don't need really the chicken so i can eat the chicken and and, and i restarted eating meat without feeling the guilt uh like this you know that's you got to appreciate the beauty of children that young because they don't they have not been jaded or or sent down the wrong path they're still impressionable um but they're also they just cut right to the chase because they don't have this extra experience yet to create, well, there's three different ways I can go with that answer, or maybe I should say it this way or that way. This can be like, hey, nope, sorry, mom. Need you, don't care about the chicken. I, I exactly. want my mom. <laughs> Straight, and he was missing me because he couldn't see me for weeks and he was missing me so much and he totally didn't care about the chicken. And yeah. That's lovely. So, so you actually owe a lot of your health healthful rebirth if you will thanks to bearing a son yeah you, yeah. you brought a boy into this world that was uh already smart enough at five to call his mom out and say mm, eat some meat mom i need you yeah yeah and now you know uh, i'm eating lots of meat and he's really happy with this and <laughs> he's he's eating a lot of meat as well and he knows that meat is good for him but he's not eating only meat it is he yeah. yeah, I'm really open-minded. He never have any eating disorder. He's doing great. He's healthy. As long as he has his meat and his fat first, then he can have whatever he wants. Uh, I, I don't. Well, that, I don't really care. That's a secret to eating. People are like, how do you eat all that meat and all that fat? And I was like, well, 
the thing is, it's so nutrient dense and so satiating that I challenge people to try and overeat, so to speak. Like if you just bring up that as an example, it's like, well, ah, it's so filling. Yeah, I sit down, eat a pound of meat, I'm done. And maybe not not everybody wants a full pound, but I eat twice a day. You know, I was telling you this last week on your show. It's like, all right. Yeah, I was like, I pretty much eat twice a day. Like this morning, I tagged you the other day over the weekend yeah, uh, on nice. my eggs and bacon. That's almost daily. It, like this morning, um, I had my I got my resupply from my local chicken farm because I buy like big flats of eggs because I eat five, six eggs. And this morning, I actually spent an extra five minutes and actually whipped up a beautiful omelet and did all that. And normally, I just slap the eggs in the iron skillet, cook up the bacon, and I'm done. But again, this morning, five eggs, four sticks of bacon. Tonight, I'll grill a steak. Last night, I was uh, I did a, a pound of ground beef. My wife had already eaten her chicken salad. <laughs> I was like, all right, you do you. I was like, she, she was kind enough to go ahead and defrost the beef for me because I was working so hard on our property all weekend. And I had friends of mine on Instagram because on my personal feed, I put all that stuff in there. The Live the Fuels mostly focus on the show. I'll put a little lifestyle stuff in there. But I was running a giant wood chipper all weekend because I've taken down dead trees. And I just want to chip all the wood up. And I, I, I took it back this morning. You'll appreciate this. Seven o'clock this morning, I hitched it up to my car, took it back to the rental facility. And they didn't tell me there was an hourly limit on the machine. Like they, they give you eight hours in the rental agreement. So for $375 US, they give it to you for the weekend because they're closed on the weekends. And, and you'll see where I'm going with this. I just kept going. I mean, Saturday, my neighbors probably thought I was taking the whole forest down. <laughs> and then Sunday, I was like, well, everything's done that I had staged. So I decided to cut down two more dead trees and keep going. So I took it back this morning. He's like, well, you got two hours of overage. And I was like, overage? He said, well, you had eight hours on the contract. And I said, he said, were you using this for business? I said, no, mostly pleasure. And he just looked at me and I said, I was just cleaning up my property. He's like, but you ran it for over 10 hours. And I said, yeah, I was like probably about five or six on Saturday and then a few on Sunday. And he goes, and you're not tired? He's like, how many guys did you have helping you? I said, none. It was just me. The dog was running around saying hi from time to time. And he just looked at me, he goes, Wow, strong work. And it's those types of things. That's why I wanted to bring that up. That just refreshes like, why? Like, dude, I'm 185 pounds. I'm, I don't know, 6'3", 6'4". I'm a cyclist, but I love endurance, quote, sports. I treat work like a sport. I just go. And then my neighbor even said, he goes, he's like, I heard your chainsaws and the chipper all weekend. He goes, how are you walking around? Exactly. I mean, that's when you fuel your body right. It's a game changer. Like so your story, where was your energy at back before you realized you might have been going down the wrong path? I mean, you, I mean, besides the wheelchair, if you didn't even have the motivation to work as an engineer, which was obviously your career passion, I mean, my God, did you have any energy? Any energy, anything, you know, I I was just doing the mandatory stuff at home and taking care of my son and that's it and I didn't have any energy to do anything else I was not even able to read a book I didn't have the energy to read the book it was too confusing wow. for me and yeah I started reading co comics at this time because at least I had the image to to see you know and mm -hmm. but I I didn't have any energy and yeah I was okay I was I was not able to walk but I was not able to do anything it was just I was just waiting my day yeah on the chair and waiting for the day to to go and you know and now uh, I was in Italy with my son a couple of weeks ago, and we were walking 20 kilometers per day. Nice. Yeah, we, were, we, we talked about the last week. Were you hiking or, you, or where were you going? Uh, we're in like, uh, it's a really mountainous uh, region, and we went up to a volcano. We were yeah. visiting island, and it was like just step stairs everywhere, and we were doing, I don't know, maybe 10,000 stairs, stairs a day and it was like my son was like going really fast and then stopping and resting and I was just really always the same rhythm and he was like but you never stop mom you never take five minutes break I don't need yeah. I don't need 
I, I can just keep going. I, I told my neighbor that I said, he goes, what do you do? He's like, do you just like, you had like a, a, a packed lunch out there all day? And I said, no, I woke up, I had my eggs and bacon. I made some coffee and then I went and started working. I said, I bring out a, a, a large flask of water and I do take a, if it's, if it's hot out and I know that I'm just working and sweating, I'll supplement some salt because people forget that the most simplistic thing, not sugar people, water and salt. There's all kinds of electric electrical things happening inside of your body at the cellular level. It creates water and salt. It, that's what creates the conductivity. I mean, I, as an engineer, how, do you put it any differently to people? I mean, how would you say that? So I, I like tying a mechanical mindset into things. So I don't know, but you, you need the ions anyway in your body to bring all everything at the right place and you need water. And yeah, you, you know, when I'm going out, I'm always... If you look at my backpack, okay, I'm a girl, but I don't have a purse. I have a backpack. A <laughs> it's, I like it. It's, That's attractive. I told my wife the same thing. She doesn't have purses. So it, yeah, yeah, it's much better, but I have everything that I need inside. I have the bottle of water. I have like a box with salt and I have a knife. I can survive. That's there you it. go. How old, your, how old is your son now? My, my son is 11. 11. He's, He's got to love you now. I mean... I mean, oh, yeah. no, no offense on the prior years, but you didn't know what you're doing. But now fast forward to today. I mean, I'm just thinking, okay, young son, mom's in a wheelchair. Uh, we're worried about eating meat. Fast forward a few years, you're doing 20 kilometer hikes and walks and checking out volcanoes. And your son's worried or confused because his mom's not running out of energy. Like you have an unlimited fuel tank. <laughs> exactly. And then he, he's asking me, he's a big fan of trampoline. So he's very good at it. He's practicing a lot. And now he's convincing me to go with him. And he say, yeah, but now you can do whatever you want. And yeah, and it's like, yeah, I remember when you were in, in the sofa just reading books to me. And now we can do whatever we want together. And let's go do it. You know, it's, like it, it's wild to me because you're, you're obviously an intelligent person, engineers, doctors, there's a lot of schooling involved. And so you go from somebody who had no problem studying learning a trade, learning a very high level profession. Obviously you had to do some reading and then fast forward. And then you're like, oh, okay, now you have no energy to read. You have no mental aptitude to even fathom that. You've lost that 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 passion. But then there's the, the physical representations, right? You're stuck in a wheelchair. You can't go on 20 kilometer hikes with your son. You can't build that amazing bond that athletics do between a parent and a child. Uh, I love outdoor sports. I, I think it's a what I, mean, I think it's wonderful that your son is, gets to experience that with you. But yet years ago, you didn't see that uh, per se the writing on the wall. You didn't see that that you were lacking all these normal things. And I know that a lot of people want to define normal, but to me, how old were you when you were in the wheelchair? 30 years old 30 three zero yeah, three yeah. Zero. that's not yeah. normal that's not normal okay yeah it's but 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 your eyes still weren't opened yet you were still you were actually suffering through that uh so to speak i mean i guess yeah. well, i mean were you suffering i mean i was suffering i was really suffering my body was just a pain uh, and the depression was so high and I planned, I, I planned the day I, I will die. I, I plan and I, I can say it uh, wow. because it's just, I, as I told Maybe you, my hair stand not... up on my arm. I'm like, what? Oh no. I, yeah. I, I've never had you that know, thought. You know, truth is, it's not really pretty, but yeah, I had what I call the suicide box ready mm -hmm. because I wanted, I, I was in such pain. I, I was thinking that just, I will end my days. And, and then when, when I didn't want to die, it was not the day I have chosen and I, I died. I say, come on, I don't want to die. Yeah. And I realized that I was not in control and I was not, yeah, I was not controlling the day I will die. And it made me scared and it, and it made me realize I didn't want to die. And I wanted something else for myself. So up to that, since you, we're talking about death, and since you already said earlier in the show, there was a six minute, technically a physical death. Up to that point, besides uh, obviously wheelchair bound, lacking energy, lacking mental capacity, uh, no drive, no, you know, just goal, goal setting. Uh, 
and the depression. Was there any other, there, there were some other physical, I don't want to call them what diseases or conditions that you were also experiencing up to that point of six minute death. Was there anything else documented? Uh, everything was crazy, uh, with my body. So, uh, I had, and this, this is what is really funny. For example, I had the fatty liver disease, uh, without in eating any fat at all for three decades. And you weren't I, drinking I, alcohol because you're, you're, oh, you're, no. you're anti-alcohol. So I, I was not drinking alcohol because yeah, I stopped in 2010 because my uncle died because he was totally drunk. Mm. And so I was not drinking any alcohol. I was not eating any fat, but uh, I had a uh, liver failure and you had liver failure because you're not giving nutrient to your body. Uh, I had, uh, I had a few heart failure because when you don't get enough potassium into your body and you cannot retain the potassium, you, you are so, so low. And even if I had potassium through my veins every single week, it was not enough to sustain because I was not giving the nutrients. So, uh, it was, yeah, I was just damaging everything. I had a lot of kidney stones. And this is due to all these crappy leafy greens I, I was eating at these times. So I was passing kidney stones all the time. Oh, that's and painful it's... by itself. I mean. Oh, yes. Oof. Yes. Uh, I got osteoporosis, of course. Uh, I didn't have any periods. I lost my hair. Uh, all well, my body how, how bad was the osteoporosis? Because that, be, that could be lifelong damaging. Was that reversible? Okay, I'm still followed at the hospital uh, regularly, and uh, I was think my endocrinologist was telling me that it's not reversible. And I say to her that I will prove to her that with carnivore it is reversible. Mm. And I have done one analysis, la body analysis last year, and I was already improving. Uh, my osteoporosis and now I'm very proud to say that I'm not with osteoporosis anymore I only have osteopenia and I'm Congrats. almost thinking that within one or two years it will be totally reversed wow now again so in, in this when we discuss osteoporosis and that transition right alone that one subject we're, 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 if we had to simplify it for somebody watching or hearing this it's really the bone density was very very poor correct because exactly. if you are wasting away in a wheelchair, there's no way that you're lifting weights uh, because you don't have the muscle tissue to even build that stronger to create a load on the skeletal structure to make it denser and stronger as well. So uh, let alone the lack of nutrients required to build stronger bones and build stronger muscles. I mean, all these variables. Uh, and, and to be fair, just I guess we'll try and be fair with the vegan thing, is technically you were already working your way through a period of anorexia. So some of that had already started setting in. But our point here is that the veganism did not help any of that. If anything, it, oh, ampl yeah. it amplified it, is what I'm exactly. hearing. Okay. Exactly. It just amplified and made my In life just five just... years? Oh, yes. Hmm. So, yeah, how many, how, how, so how long has the carnivore chapter been going now? As we're recording this, I'll timestamp it. It says May 15th, 2023. So how long roughly have you been just all in on the meat? I started very high fat carnivore diet on July 23rd of 2021. So it would okay. be two years in July. So my thing is this, it's already been over a year. I think if anything weird was going to be possibly bad, I think you would have noticed that, especially as bad as your body had gotten, as broken as it was, and as you were physically and mentally. Um, so just for like a time stamping, I get, I get everybody's biology is different. Everybody's backgrounds are different, but going from that severe state, six minutes of death, healing yourself, getting out of the wheelchair, working with osteoporosis, what would you... What are some of the key things that stood out to you, let's say in that first year? Like what were those big like aha moments, like, wow, I think I chose the right path. What, what's, what, what stood out to you? Okay. The, the main thing is I've been out within three months. I was out of all supplementation. I'm not taking any, any supplementation. When I was vegan, I was taking at least 60 pills per day. So How much did when that you... cost? Wow. Uh, tons. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you're trying anything to have your minerals balanced, but it's just impossible. 
And so I was taking these and I was taking uh, antidepressant. I was taking medicines for anxiousness and I was taking sleeping pills. So it was all this within three months, high fat carnivore, zero medication, zero. There is no Just after 90 days. 90 days. 90 wow. days. Wow. Yeah. Because that's a lot of, that's hard on your and, organs too, processing you, all those medications and supplements. You, Yes, of course. And you have to have in mind that uh, I was with still an anorexic brain when I started and mm. I, I started eating as crazy uh, and I was gaining weight. And for an uh, anorexic girl, gaining weight is oh, really scary. difficult. Yeah. It's very really scary and you have a lot of anxiety, but nourishing my brain, my brain knew it was the good thing to do. And I remove all the anxiety within three months. Mm. This is just amazing, you know? That's powerful. Because that's that's the other big really thing here. Your body it might take some people's bodies might take longer or shorter. I always tell, I say this on my show all the time. We're so, we're just we could we're, each of us are going to be at a different place on the timeline, and our timelines could be different, slightly different. But in the end, you know, if somebody's going through a massive amount of weight loss and they need they need to lose let's say two hundred pounds versus the person who started a year ahead of them, and now they only have fifty pounds less. You should look at that person not as, oh, I'll never be that person because look how far they've gotten. It, is, it should be motivational. It should be like, wow, I could get there. I, or, or in your case, flip that. I was anorexic. I'm trying to work my way out of that. I'm going to get back to not looking like a walking skeleton and having some muscle tissue to be strong for my son and to go and go on long hikes and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so the mental game is huge. I've been podcasting since 2000. I don't even remember now. It's been a while. I have over 400 shows. So back in my early personal and professional development days, the biggest things influencers, the good ones will teach you is you've got to have a strong mindset. You have to build a powerfully strong mind, but that's not possible unless you're fueling it right. Exactly. And you've clarified that multiple times today. It's like your brain was starved. Exactly. And it was really, really fast to just give it the nutrient back and to make it work again. It was really, really fast. And that was the most impressive stuff for me. And yeah, and uh, I stopped fearing the fat. And that was, yeah, the, the life changer. So you are pill-free, supplement-free, drug-free in 90 days. That means, well, I know, so uh, how was the anxiety and depression? Was that also like pretty much hitting the reset switch? Uh, it was uh, after 30 days, I didn't have, I, I was not feeling anxious or depressed anymore, but I kept going to see my psychiatrist. Okay. And up to now, I'm still see seeing frequently my psychiatrist just yeah. in case. And I'm, li I'm a single mom, you know, I'm living on my own with my son and I don't want my son to have to take care of me or to be like aware if something is going on wrong or not so i always say to him that is the medical stuff part so don't don't try to take care of myself I, very therapeutic they, yeah yeah you, 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 in order for you to take care of your son it's okay to have somebody help take care of you and yeah. just because just because you don't medically need it it's yeah. a, a lot of people that's why i love about psychology or psychiatry depending on who you're, you're meeting with and talking with one one can issue drugs one can't but if you find the right, I like to call them partners, um, partner with you and your goals, uh, that's just going to make you a better person. It's going to make you a better mother. It's going to make you a better professional. Uh, so I tell people, I, tell, I, I don't look at that as a negative thing at all. I mean, I, I even, I told my wife, we've only been married for four years. I was like, hey, shouldn't we have like a marriage counselor? And she goes, oh, are, we, are we having a fight? <laughs> I said, no, but... That's become much more common nowadays, just because like, you know, you're going to have these conversation differences from time to time. And sometimes it's good to have somebody there just to bounce it off of. And yeah. so I, I'm open to it. My, that, my whole point to my wife was like, baby, I'm just letting you know, if we ever need something, I'm open to it. I'm not afraid of going to go talk to somebody with a PhD. Uh, they yeah. probably know something a little bit more than I do. <laughs> yeah. Actually, they definitely do. <laughs> so, Yeah, so and I'm, you know. It was really important for me and she helped me a lot to go out of the medication because it's the same, you know, you cannot go out of psychiatrist medication, oh, no. uh, no. just listening to a, 
person in the and an influencer saying you go carnivore and then you you stop being depressed and anxious okay no it, it takes it, it took me three months but we did it gradually gradually and she was helping me with this and no way she would give me back any kind of pill now she she knows that it's working and it's fine but but yeah you know you always need to st- yeah, you, for all this very heavy medication, you need medical advice. I'm an engineer, I'm not a doctor. And no. this makes the difference. I, I love the fact you add that extra clarification. Yes, we don't want people hearing this or watching this and just thinking, I'm going to go eat a steak for the next three months. And then I'm just going to get off of any medications I've been on for yeah. years. I have I have a sister who is uh, suffers from like dual personality, depression. She's been on all kinds of co- drug cocktails for years. I love her, but... I have also tried telling her, I'm like, listen, the doctor can only do so much. You still have some personal accountability to invest in yourself and try and work on the things that you can control. Ergo, your diet, your nutritional choices, your lifestyle choices, et cetera. Again, you don't need to be a doctor to take a stand on those points that you and I have been hitting heavily on today. These are our things that we are accountable. I tell people all the time, I learned that a great quote years ago. We're personally and collectively accountable for our results. So personally, I have to step up, put the best version of myself out there, not just for me, but obviously my dog, my wife, my family, et cetera. <laughs> but then collectively, hopefully I found the right partner, my wife, and the right circle of close friends, the ones I trust, to, to help us all collectively rise up together. I've also learned over the years, don't tell people what to eat. <laughs> now, yeah. when you get really passionate and you know stuff's working, I got to have some fun with you here as we get, get towards the end of the show. It's like, okay, just because we know it works doesn't mean that your friend or your relative needs needs to have that pushed down their throat. Have you had any of those moments? I just want to bring some light towards the end of the show. <laughs> I'm trying. I've been trying to push a little bit and to show you see how much it's working. Come on. My parents, they, they don't have health issues, major health issues. They don't have a why to switch to meat only. And they are eating a healthy diet. They are eating a Mediterranean diet. They are not eating processed food. Yeah. Uh, and But if you ask my my dad to stop the wine when he's going with a party, he, he will tell you, "I'm French. I want to enjoy." You know, so, <laughs> so just because you're so- French doesn't mean you got to put down a whole bottle, Dad. I'm not. I'm just making that up. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's but, a lot of sugar. It, it's a lot of sugar. It's yeah. a lot of sugar, and yeah, and you know, the French cuisine is really famous, and most of the people don't want to go with this. But yeah, for me, it's it's okay. They they are doing their choice, and as I say, they don't eat processed food, and they are drinking wine occasionally, and sometimes they go out and they go to the bakery and buy croissant and crap stuff like this. Mm. They are healthy, they are happy. They don't have the need and the why to go that strict. They are enjoying. I'm happy for them. I just convinced them that uh, the the marketing was saying like you need only to eat uh, meat twice a week. Uh, I convinced them that it's not real and it's better to eat meat every meal. And they are eating meal with meat with all the meals, so that's fine. One thing that I've uh, I had friends of mine blowing up my text messages this weekend with stuff from I like to call it the negative news networks. Because I don't have cable television. I've never had I've never had a cable television bill in my name. I've never had it. When I met my wife, I had a very simple apartment. She would like to say that, thank God I moved because she never would have stayed there. But it was I don't I don't need a lot. I mean, I have more now than I've ever had, but I was like, I, I don't I don't need a lot. I live very simply. I had the internet and I think I played I think if if I watched the television, it was Hulu. Like I was I was just traveling last week on business and I stayed at hotels. I don't miss that. You turn the TV on. Oh my God. Every second commercial was a drug commercial. So if people are getting their health advice or medical guidance or two stick, two pieces of meat a week or two days, whatever that is, it's like, guys, like, did it come off the television? I probably wouldn't trust it. Maybe you want to go get a second and third opinion from an actual medical professional or a nutritional expert versus that marketing spoof that you had come across the TV, so. Exactly, and it's I'm the same, you know, I never switch on the TV. 
Mm. Uh, I have a TV for my son to watch some DVDs uh, because he's allowed to have uh, screen time only in English to, yeah. <laughs> because he needs to be speaking English. So mm. that's why I have a TV, but it's never on. And so we never see any commercials and we yeah, we don't want this. This is so much crap to brainwash your brain. Yes. Yeah. Have you have you um, have you seen some of the reversed uh, TV series? Oh uh, yes, it's. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So real quick I interview Sean Maddox. <clears throat> I figured you. I thought you had some of that, somebody from that thing on your on your channel. So yeah. And yeah. I spoke with Charles, and he's going to do one reverse series on veganism, from veganism to carnivore, and my, I might go on it. Okay, I like that. So I think that'd yeah. be great. So for the listeners, that, that is a feed out there in the Instagram world you can follow. I know Dr. Anthony Chaffee and a bunch of, actually, uh, a bunch of docs I follow online were down in, was it Costa Rica where they shot that? Yes, in Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, again, another beautiful country that I, is on my to-do list to go to. Uh, but I will say powerful moves. I, I, my wife and I do love documentary films or anything like that, a documented style of educational content. So if you have a choice, go. If you need to stare at a TV screen for a little bit, do it educationally. I mean, from time to time, you want to put something dramatic on or romantic, you know, with a significant other, that's one thing. But I don't understand the whole sitting behind a television all day. It doesn't, does not ring true to me whatsoever. <laughs> So, well, I've had a blast here, Claire, and we have a few minutes left to uh, come to the end of the hour. And what are, what are your next steps? You're blowing the YouTube up. You're, you're obviously found the right topic to polarize people with. And I'm sure your, uh, your, your, your comments section probably gets all types, but there's always the positives and there's always the negatives mixed in. But it, it, what's happening next for you? Continuing just sharing the messaging right now on YouTube as your primary platform? Yeah, I want to keep going with YouTube. I want to keep sharing, yeah, spreading the word that meat heals because meat heals. I love that hashtag. <laughs> it's a great hashtag. I use it all the time. Hashtag meat heals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just got a new knife because I'm a big fan of knife and you can write something on a knife and I just put meat here and it would be perfect to cut my steak. So oh, now perfect. I'm jealous. Oh, you just gave me a great idea. I need a new knife. I do have a lot of knives. But... I love knives. And yeah. yeah. Do you, yeah, do you follow like Dr. Fashion. Sean Baker? Yeah, I follow Dr. Yeah. Sean Baker because, you know, I'm I'm a Rivero coach. So I'm Oh, is that where you got the eating... carnivore coach from? I saw that on your Instagram. So you're in his yeah. program? Yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, I, I'm I'm leading the mental health meeting uh, twice a week. Okay. So yeah, yeah for, for the listeners, I had Sean Baker on the show years ago and uh, ran into him again out at KetoCon last year. And then he was a speaker. And then I know he, he spun off a whole, I, I would like to call it a health company not a medical company, not a pharmaceutical company, but training amazing people like you and helping get the right coaching and education out there for people who do want to properly embrace me as a way of life. So yeah. how long have you been coaching now? Uh, a little bit more than a year. Okay. Um, yeah. That's exciting. I saw, I, I, I saw a carnivore coach on there, but I didn't see that branding. So I wasn't sure how, is that something they're just leading with that or is that was your own choice just to put carnivore coach because it's easy? Uh, I, I, it's really easy to go with the certification on Rivero. It's easy. Okay. Uh, you don't need to be really bright to do it. You need to just know the, the fundamentals about the diet. It, it was easy. Uh, and I, I want to, I want to follow an, another course. Uh, it's the Georgia Eat course. And I, oh, might I love do Georgia. It. But we were talking all about psychology today. So yeah, uh, Georgia, she's been on the show. She, so she, Georgia, and multiple people we've talked about today have all been in, uh, again, I've talk, I brought Vinny Torders to you before. I got to get you connected. Have you ever met, do you, you have any connections of Vinny? With? Well, Vinny Torders. Have you ever gone on his show yet? No. Oh, do you want to hook up? I'll get you hooked up. Yeah. So yeah. Vinny, Vinny has a very successful following and his documentary fills fat, a documentary Fat, a documentary too, and then um, Beyond, Beyond Impossible was his newest documentary about okay. the fake meat industry. All his movies, his best-selling book, Fitness Confidential, but long story short, I know him well. I'll shoot him a text. He would love to have somebody like you on because you have a real-life 
story of that conversion and and he would definitely he would definitely have oh, i would be so. so honored if he can and that, because and you he, know he's he can get on your youtube channel then so yeah. oh yeah i would love to because yeah his documentaries that's something i watch on tv you know yeah see that's worth it watching that's educational yeah <laughs> these was and these even things. my wife admitted she's like you know those documentaries were actually really good because he, they actually share actual numbers actual data not just fake fluff and, and, and acting it's actual doctors giving you actual data uh, researchers engineers etc so they're, they're just great movies so but i'll get you connected with Denis. don't worry about that yeah well well listen claire i do ask my guest co-hosts to leave behind a final message and for years it was just final words of the show but then i realized you know what is the legacy we're leaving behind in this world and something as powerful as you've gone through being a mom and, and your transformation, uh, I figured there's definitely something legacy in your own brain and, and what you think of differently nowadays. So wh what would you like to leave behind for the listeners? Oh, I think, uh, yeah, I lived all this crap in the past to make me a better person and to be able to educate people. And yeah, I was wrong. I was brainwashed and I'm not anymore. I think on my own. And if I can do this, it's just because I eat the meat and the fat. So go ahead and go to your butcher and eat meat and fat. I love the simplicity of that. Well, listen, hang tight. I'll give you a prep buy off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, Claire rocked the mics for you guys today. So as a reminder, actually, I'll screen share one last time here for the video watchers in the YouTube world. So again, check her out at Beyond the Scale True Healing. It's it's at Beyond the Scale TH. And then again, on the Instagram, her puppy's name, Lolly underscore Carney, Carney for Carnivore. You can follow her on both those channels as well. We'll have this linked in the show notes like we always do. But again, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. And Claire definitely helped us today. I appreciate her honesty and transparency with her own health transformation. And if this has exposed anything to you, reach out to her. And again, she's a carnivore coach. So, uh, and again, if she's connected to Sean Baker, I trust her. So again, ladies and gentlemen, you two can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.